Today is May 27, and I finally received permission from the Lord to set three of my videos to a public setting that were formerly on a private setting. These three other videos were uploaded on January 26 of this year, 2018, and also on January 30 and February 3rd. This prophecy that I'm uploading today was received on May 23, 2018, the ninth of Sivan. It is being published on May 27, the 13th of Sivan. A link to the transcript of this prophecy is in the description below. The Lord says to you, Do you believe that Judas was in his right mind when he betrayed me to the death for silver? No, he was not. Satan took possession of his body, and when he discovered later what he had done, he hung himself. It was Lucifer who showed Judas what he was. I come now to divide the wheat from the tares and to thus fulfill prophecy. You will now witness the great apostasy made visible, but you will also witness the greatest revival known to mankind as I gather my wheat into one place into a unified body. Do not think that I come only to bring peace but a sword as those who are true to me will incite the wrath of the enemy as they speak my truth to the world. This sword belongs to Satan and is placed into the hands of those who belong to him. He is a ravenous lion, seeking to, for prey to devour. Do not think that you can call yourself by my name and truly belong to me when your first allegiance is to Lucifer. Judgment begins with the house judgment begins in the house of God when Lucifer takes what truly belongs to him. All that is hid in darkness will eventually come to light and be made manifest in the last days. This is not easy for many to hear, but my elect bride is not pure and spotless. If I gather my bride to myself, even now, she would be very few in number. Did I not say that the path which leads to eternal life is narrow, and few there be which enter it? Many who call themselves by my name, even church leaders, are full of idolatry and hateful thoughts against their brethren. This is not the fruit of my Holy Spirit, and if you are not indwelt by my Holy Spirit, then you are fair game in Satan's eyes. If you are not the temple of the Lord, then whose temple are you? Do not think that you can continuously take my name in vain through your life and through your lawless actions and that by simply wearing my cross around your neck you will be protected from the enemy. I desire to see true righteousness in your life. By this fruit of righteousness, I know that you are mine. What is the candy of the Lamb which some have, which some have witnessed in the dreams or visions that I have given to them? It is the fruit of righteousness which will spring forth out of great trials and tribulations. As it is written, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Do not imagine that the pruning of your branches and the tilling of your soul will be painless. This is the patience of the saints. 
Will you be passed over in the tribulation of my saints? Is the blood of Yeshua upon the doorpost of your house? Have you come out from among them? Are you separate? When you compromise with the world, even my precious innocent ones may suffer and die. When you compromise, you lose power. Certain strongholds of this enemy can be broken only through sincere prayer and fasting. This includes fasting from the world and its sinful pleasures. Do not toy with the enemy. Do not taste of his delicacies and offer them. Do not taste of his delicacies and offer them on a silver platter to your children. Do not dress them like witches and warlocks. Do not turn your children over to be educated by the enemy. Do not neglect their soft hearts by putting your own selfish ambitions before them. They are in your charge. Treat them tenderly. Give them first priority after me. Lay yourself aside and embrace the kingdom of heaven. And do not murder my tiny ones. Do not support those who do. It is not an option. If you do not believe I can take care of you and your unborn child, then you do not have faith in me. You are trusting only in yourself, and this is why abortion seems to be your only way out. Do you not know that I own the cattle on a thousand hills? Do you not believe that I care for the lilies of the field and for the tiny sparrow? If I care for these, why would I not care for you? I will take care of you. Only trust me and be willing to take what comes. Do not give me an ultimatum. If you do not give all of yourself to me, then you have given none of yourself to me. Do not be a Judas. Rather, be like Esther, who was willing to lay down her life in the small chance that her people might be saved. Do you love the brethren, even as Esther loved her people? Are you willing to part with your life so that others might be saved? How strong is your love? How deep and how true is your love? Is your love for me true and certain? Will you sell your soul for silver? Will you neglect your br Will you neglect your brethren for physical gain? He who loses his life for my sake will find it. But the one who grasps for things that are fleeting in this life will surely lose it. The one who oppresses the poor so that he can amass his own gain oppresses me. This is a bitter cup for my people to drink, but you are joined to me, my holy bride, my beloved. You are my body. My breath must become your breath. My words, your words. My deeds, your deeds. My love, your love. 
together, we will now become unified as one. I am yours, and you are mine.